Stasis dermatitis is an inflammatory skin condition which develops secondary to chronic venous insufficiency and edema. Early symptoms include local erythema and scaling, while later symptoms may include skin discoloration, worsening edema, and skin ulceration. Treatment of chronic venous insufficiency involves reduction of the edema through leg elevation, exercise, weight reduction, compression stockings, medications, or vein surgery. Adjuvant treatment with osteopathic manipulative treatment may be helpful to remove somatic dysfunction that may be impeding lymphatic and venous flow. A developing body of literature has demonstrated increased lymphatic flow and improved immune function with various lymphatic techniques. Lymphatic treatment should begin by addressing somatic dysfunctions around common body regions that may impede flow such as thoracic inlet and the terminal lymphatic drainage point. Work from proximal to distal lymphatic structures. Treatment of the thoracic diaphragm may also be helpful as its motion induces positive and negative pressure in the abdomen, propelling lymph and venous blood. For low extremity structures, treatment of the pelvic diaphragm may be useful. With more proximal restrictions to fluid flow removed, the physician can focus on improving venous and lymphatic motion in the lower extremity and thigh. The first technique we will utilize is the balanced ligamentous tension technique of the hip. The patient lies supine with the physician standing on the dysfunctional side. Flex the hip and knee. Contact the greater trochanter with the thenar eminence. Apply an anterior medial force aimed at the head of the femur. With your other hand, reach over the leg and cup the anterior aspect of the leg just below the inguinal fold with the thumb laying medially and the second and third digits contacting the superior lateral aspect of the greater trochanter. This hand may supply a posterior lateral force at the head of the femur. Through your axilla, utilize the flexed knee as a long lever to bring the hip into balanced tension on all sides via flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal, and external rotation through the knee. For this demonstration, I'll utilize flexion, abduction, and external rotation to balance tension. Finally, compression may be applied through the axilla to facilitate balance tension or position of ease. This process may be augmented with respiratory assistance from the patient. Can you take a deep breath for me? The position is held until a release is palpated and then symmetry of motions in all planes and tissue texture changes may be reassessed. Both the deep venous and lymphatic circulations of the leg pass through the popliteal fossa and the posterior knee. The treatment, popliteal fossa release, may improve circulation in this region. The physician, facing the supine patient, contacts both medial and lateral aspects of the popliteal fossa in their hands and palpates for any hypertonicity or restrictions of motion in the fascia, or tendinous attachments of the hamstring or gastrocnemius muscle. The treatment utilizes an anterior force via the fingertips and can move either directly into the restricted barrier or indirectly via following ease of motion in all planes, assessing superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. For this demonstration, I'll show contacting the direct barrier in superior and medial planes. Breath may also be utilized to facilitate the tissue relaxation. Could you take a deep breath for me? Treatment is performed until a release is palpated or tissue texture changes are appreciated. Contraindications and cautions for these techniques may include, but are not limited to, necrotizing fasciitis, treatment directly over areas of infection, chronic systemic infection, fractures near the treatment site, hip replacement, current cancer diagnosis, uncontrolled cardiac failure, septic conditions, or risk of deep venous thrombosis or other hypercoagulable state. Alleviation of somatic dysfunction allows for fewer impediments at crucial myofascial transition zones, allowing active pumping and effleurage techniques to propel fluid motion forward. The utilization of OMT in patients with chronic venous insufficiency and stasis dermatitis may facilitate improved lymphatic and venous flow, leading to decreased edema and pain.